Hi, this is uh, a little project that was, uh, well I volunteered for it to be honest. It's a clock in the end of a, a kind of a telescope, it's a retro sort of uh, piece that was found in a charity shop actually. But the clock don't work. No, I haven't taken on the task to mend the clock, but uh, to at least take it apart to see what's going on. The problem was that the person who bought it couldn't thought it might unscrew, but it won't. It, we've tried everything under the sun to, to try to un, unscrew this, or um, applied a bit of heat. It might be threaded. It might be press fit. I really don't know. Well, I didn't know. So I uh, playing around with it, trying to unscrew the eyepiece, looking in the end. I, uh, there's a hole there where the eyepiece glass would normally be. Uh, in the end, I, w I thought, I wonder if it's two, it's two feet that's actually screwed in to here. And I thought, I wonder if the two feet is actually holding the clock in position. So I managed to start unscrewing <laughs> screwing the foot. And uh, apparently it was, there's not, this tube isn't threaded. It was a nut on the inside that fell off. You can hear it. So, um, and I thought, well, it didn't look like it was retaining anything inside, so I unscrewed the other leg. That nut fell off as well. And no, it's just solid, completely solid. So I've been wound around this sort of a Spanish windlass around it like, uh, to grip it. That won't do it. My hands just aren't strong enough. I've tried other people's attempted, they couldn't undo it either. So, uh, I started probing inside it uh, by shining a light in that hole, one of the holes, and then eyeballing in the other hole, I could just detect, uh, I had enough light inside to detect threads on the inside of this uh, tube, which means this is actually screwed over over this, uh, um, what, what do we want to call it, extension piece, or joining piece. Um, so it is, that barrel is actually screwed onto a thread. Now it might have used varnish or something to lock the thread. I really don't know. But it will not undo. So I've tried gentle heat and that didn't work. So my next pro uh, thought was, um, I've got to take it off now because nuts are inside. I can't put the feet back on. So what I've come up with is the idea I've come up with is a bit of gash wood which I've drilled a hole in it which just looks slightly I won't go through that way but it'll go through that way so this will fit on there and I've drilled a hole through here and pushed a bit of brass rod through only brass because that's what I had floating around so the theory is if I can grip this in the lathe without marking it if I can grip this end in the lathe without marking it so I'm going to part, wind a load of tape around that um, narrow part grip that in the lathe and then that will give me some purchase to actually turn the barrel hopefully to unscrew it so so that's the uh, well, that's what I'm planning on actually doing at the moment, so. so if I rearrange things here a bit Okay, I'm going to use some uh, cheap tape to wind around here. This is my attempt number one. And another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that's ten turns. That's ten turns of tape there. If I, if I mark this, it's, it's rubbish. It's junk. Because it's meant to be a ornament. So the last thing I want to do is actually mark it. So, uh, I'll see what we can do here now. I can place it. Right, it's 
slips I can tight, keep tightening it. So, so that's the setup here. end. Right, let's start again. <laughs> I need to get this through the hole first, yeah? Then tape it because it won't go through the head. So now in that position here. So let's see if we can make it work. Okay. Okay. Right, we got the pin in the hole. And stick this one in a lower gear. No, really, one screw. Still turn. Let's tighten them up a bit more. That's him. I think that's him. Yep. One of the nuts, the other one obviously escaped. A little plastic or something diaphragm here. I don't, I'm not quite sure, I think I was keeping the atmospherics out. It was that, that was actually glued or cemented, super glued to the flange. It's quite a well made piece of kit really. Um, just like the old familiar sort of one mil uh, thread that's typical of the old screw on camera lenses. Might be a genuine telescope fitting thread. Very nice little dial, really, but. Um, actually, looking inside, I can. Zoom out now. Looking inside, it looks like there could be that uh, retaining circlip. Could well be a retaining circlip, I don't know. But then you can see the watch movement there, which is obviously a uh, a, a electric one, so it's probably just a flat battery. 
So that was always meant to come apart again. So so maybe we can uh, actually um, mend this one. Little tiny, tiny battery there, see it? Right. A follow up on this uh, telescope uh, clock. Volunteering to uh, look at it. The prime purpose was to open it, which I've achieved anyway. But because it, I didn't ever expect to mend the, the, the clock itself. But once I realised it was a electric clock, I decided to uh, well at least replace the battery and see what happens. And unfortunately, I tried to video it, but it wasn't an easy battery to replace. And as a result, I messed up the video. My hands was covering up the camera vision, so I, I, I couldn't actually show you. Fit. It was a quite a tricky one to fit, but if I can zoom in, the battery itself there was held both sides, this side and that side. So I've carefully unscrewed these uh, pieces of the watch movement or it's kind of a watch movement I slackened the screws off on the two pieces of clock movement until I could eventually get this battery to be placed uh, I managed to do it the clock's now functioning uh, of course the, as you can see the um, you see the second arm moving around and um, of course Pulling it out is for correcting the time. Pushing it in does nothing. It, it doesn't wind because it's, it's not connected in that fashion because of, because of the uh, electric sort of movement. But um, So we're, it's actually completed. But I'll, I just want to show you the battery. The battery wasn't actually marked with one of these AG numbers. But uh, this has given me a guide to other re battery replacements. So, uh, AG1 is, is uh, this little tiny one here. Now that was the right diameter, but it wasn't thick enough. So if I can zoom right in, um, come out enough to focus. This one here was uh, too short. In fact, this one was 2.12 uh, millimeters thick, and the one that actually came out out the uh, clock uh, was that one, which was actually um, 2.5 millimeters thick. And there's another one in the range on this on this uh, supply <laughs> battery supply board here, uh, all AG one, two, and three. Now, now what? doesn't follow common sense. AG ones here are the narrow, uh, the thin ones, which was too thin. AG three, you you think would be th um, thicker, which they are, are actually 3.42. But AG three, AG four, you think would be thicker again, but it isn't, it's gone down. So, so the order of them really is AG1, AG4, AG3, which don't make much sense, does it? But um, that's the way they're marked. So the, the thick one was too thick at 3.42 millimeters. So the one I actually used was the one in between, which was uh, um, 2.5. I did a measurement. Um, Do a voltage measure measurement. Right, this is a typical example of, of these um, batteries. Is if I can, they one point five one eight five. It's one point five is uh, obviously the nominal voltage of these. This is the one that came out of the watch as uh, 0.52. So he was dead flat basically. Only thing that remains now is the, 
the little paper, a cardboard disc to stick back in here. I was thinking of gluing it in. I'm, I am worried about uh, the vapour from super glue. Okay, I've changed my mind. I've decided to go with some, I've got some leather adhesive here, clear, that uh, worked very well for sticking rubber onto the rubber bungs onto the rear uh, mud guard of the uh, Harley. So. so I think we'll, uh, oh yeah, while we we're, this is open, I don't know if you can actually see inside. How well this was actually made. I don't know if you can actually see the threads. Even that middle section is threaded. It's got a thread inside the tube there. You see it on the wall. I'm really surprised for a retro sort of a cheap retro uh, item. It was so well made. I was even wondered if it had been converted and sh a shortened version of, of a real uh, telescope. This is like a one-off. The threaded areas here you see. I don't know if you can actually see that or not, I really don't know. Probably see that now. There and Maybe try that again. Yeah, perhaps you can see that. Really well made. Okay, so. So I just want to go, get to this. Right, I'll let that dry. Okay, this is the the legs. I was thinking of putting some very mild, like purple uh, thread lock on, but uh, I don't think it's re required because now if, if, if they should get loose then you can simply unscrew it and tighten them up. I might countersink these holes. I think uh, the legs might sit square. It's, it's quite a sharp edge on, on these holes here. You can see that most of the things I did on this thing, it was quite fiddly, it's rather difficult to to film. Get there slowly. Okay, I just want to Tighten that slightly. I'm just going to nip them up lightly with the pliers because I haven't got uh, a spanner to fit. They are awkward size. I've got a feeling it might be uh, 3.5 metric, 3.5 millimeter metric. That's fine. I'll do that. 
Okay, it's dried out enough, I think, to stick now. So I'm going to put this in here. Okay. There you go. 